FCC, I so miss being with you and I'm so excited to be able to break the bread of life with you today. To Pastor Sean and Erica, I love you so much. Uh, to Heaven and to Sean, Isaiah and Hannah, I miss you guys and I hope you're doing amazing. I have been laboring with this word uh, for some time and I'm excited to be able to share what I believe God has in store for us today. And we're going to go ahead and get right into it. But before we do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I ask you today to speak through my lips and to use this time to activate the destiny and the seed of God in each and every believer. And I pray, Father, that these words would also be an awakening to the lost and to those that do not know you. Father, we are asking for rhema today. We are asking to make alive the logos today. And Father, I ask for a revelatory word that would shift us and change us and awaken the destiny of our hearts for now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. I believe that the message today is a critical key in the plan of God for our lives. Right now we are living in very turbulent times and these times are critical, uh, not just that we would pass through them, but that we would be on point, on task, and on mission in the time that the Lord has given us to. And with that, let's go to our text verse today that's going to be found in Psalms chapter eight, verse two. I'm gonna read from several translations uh, to really give us a foundation and to open this verse in our understanding. First reading uh, out of the Brenton translation. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou perfected praise because of thine enemies. That's right, the praise became perfect because of the enemies and because there was a point of conflict, that was the basis of this perfecting happening. That thou might put down the enemy and the avenger. God is a God of drama. And if you didn't know that, you should read a little bit more of the scriptures because he likes a showdown, he likes a battle, and he has raised conquerors in you and I. And we are not on this earth only for peace, but also to do warfare and to do battle uh, for the spirit of the living God. Now we're going to read out of the Dewey Rhymes translation. Out of the mouth of infants and of sucklings, thou hast perfected praise because of thy enemies, that thou might destroy the enemy and the avenger. We're going to read now from the New Heart Bible. From the lips of children and infants, you have established praise because of your adversaries that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. And now from the word of God, uh, the God's word translation, it declares from the mouths of little children and infants, you have built a fortress against your opponents to silence the enemy and the avenger. So literally, when we worship and when we praise, we are building a wall. We are building a hedge or a fortress against our opponents. An opponent means that you are in a duel. You are in a match. You are in a battle and that you are waging warfare. But in that, God has raised the standard against the enemy and he's doing it with our praise. And now for one additional translation, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou established praise because of thine adversaries to steal the enemy and the avenger. That's the Darby translation. And then I've got one more for you. This is my paraphrase. You could call it the Dexter translation. And uh, this one hopefully brings it home a little bit more. For this purpose, you established and ordained praise to come forth from what seemed to be the most unordinary place, the people that you call your own prized possession, the fruit of the earth. You did it to make the devil and all of his imps and powers behave. That is the power of praise, people of God, and that is what God has called us to. This mighty authority that the power of God is wielded over the enemy when we praise the Lord. 
And as a prophet of God, I can declare to you without wavering that I am a testimony of the power of praise and the ability that praise has in your life to shift circumstances. If I had time to rehearse the miracles wrought through praise that I have literally seen uh, manifest as a result of that exuberance being re released in the presence of the Lord, it would take me hours to share some of those things. And we've shared in some of that in the years past as I've been able to come into fellowship and to be a part of ministry with you. But I am letting you know unequivocally, without a shadow of turning or doubt in my heart, that the praises of God, the high praises of God, according to Psalms 149, have transformative ability and power. And in this series of fighting fatigue, I want to encourage you that God is doing something phenomenal in this season. And we cannot allow the circumstances of our environment to dictate the power and the potency of our praise. But we must take advantage of the opportunity and we must gain the upper hand. And we do that when we superimpose our mantle on the enemy with the praises of the Lord. Now, the virus and the race wars, the political upheaval, all of that is very real. It has its own natural consequence, but in the spirit, much of it is a distraction from the ultimate plan of God for this time, in this age. The war is on, and as we go through the scriptures, we understand those things that happen at the changing of an age and the turn of an era. And so we are in a very phenomenal time where things from the next age are bleeding over into this one. And I'll be honest with you to tell you that the enemy is trying it right now. That's right, he is actually forcing his hand. He is trying uh, as the prince in the power of the air to control that space with fear and doubt and worry to the point that it contaminates our faith. But we must say no to the devil and yes to God and rebuke the devil for who he is, a liar. And when you understand that the father of lies sees to birth and to forward the spirit of a lie into his children of disobedience, he is perpetuating evil that will lock you out of what God already said about you. That's right. The devil does not want you to accept the promises of God. And what I am telling you is that the more fierce the times become and the more challenging and the more chaotic that our environment is, that is the time, people of God, that God is answering prayers and he is releasing miracles. And this is your season. I am not speaking out of routine only, but I am speaking out of revelation by the spirit of the Lord. This is your finest hour and you must step into all that God has for you. Now, when I come to God in petition and prayer, I come knowing that I am in the place to do business with God. When I am in the rhythm of my work day and I'm working in natural space, I don't expect for unbelievers to have a revelation of what God has in store for me. So we have to understand how to work in two realms, if, you, if you're hearing me clearly there. And so we have to continue to make the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. But the way that we do that is understanding the time that we are in and functioning according to pattern. Now, spiritually, your job in this season is to silence the devil. That's right. We are assigned to silence hell's fury and all spiritual forces at work on the earth that oppose our God ordained destiny. And one of the key ways to subdue these rogue forces is through the power of praise. In Psalms 8, that word strength and praise are synonymous. And that is really powerful because God has ordained that our praises would be strong and yield strength in the presence of the Lord. Have you ever heard that verse, the joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah 8 and 10. It is a reality that we obtain joy in the presence of the Lord. When we praise the Lord, we are strengthened, we are refueled. Say this, say this aloud with me. From my mouth, on my lips is my strength. Say that again. From my mouth, on my lips is my strength. We must believe that and we must understand that the power of words, death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I am letting you know that life is in your praise. When you begin to celebrate and turn up the heat in praise, you begin to shift the atmosphere over your head. And I may even be speaking to someone who is sick and fighting uh, fatigue in your body, not just after a mental torment, but a physical torment. I want to encourage you. You may not have all the strength to praise the Lord as you would like to, but I am saying that God hears every prayer prayed and he is aware of you. And if you would open your mouth and open your heart, you may not even be able to fully get the words out, but the praise out of your spirit still has a resonancy. And if you would give that yes to God and give him that celebration and honor that is due him, I guarantee you that your atmosphere too will begin to change. Praise is will activated. It is an act of the will. Uh, when the Bible challenges us to praise the Lord, it is not telling us to do something that something else or someone else or some other system can do for you. No, this is an act of your own will. You must praise the Lord. And the days are dark. Isaiah 60 told us that it would be this way. But when you feel the spirit of heaviness, you must put on the garment of praise, casting off the spirit of heaviness. And when you put on praise like a garment, it is an act of the will. This is not something that we do because we feel good. We don't have all of the accoutrements of ministry right now where we can uh, do things according to the rote pattern that we've been doing for years. But we are being challenged to flip the script and in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable position, begin to lift up the praises of our God. I want to read a verse to you out of Psalm 42 and 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. That's right. We praise God even in the midst of pressure, even in the midst of upheaval, when things are not going right. That is when praise becomes requisite. It is not an optional thing, but it is something that we must do. And we must know this too, that we are a mystery. As we read down, we can see this more fully in this passage. Our text today in Psalms 8, if we go back to Psalms 8, back to Psalms 8, we're going to start in the fourth verse. He declares, David the psalmist declares, what is man that you take thought of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and with majesty. You make him or her to rule over the works of your hands. My God, you have put, you Lord have put all things under his feet. Now this verse is, is powerful. It is showing us our place in God, seated with him in heavenly places, far, abo uh, far above principalities and powers and rulers and mights and dominions. Our seat in the heavenlies is over the devil. And you may be wondering today, what is all of this chaos going on in the world and why are things so tense right now? Why is there so much uh, chaos and so much confusion? It is because... The war is on for the authority that we hold in the heavens to enact the move of God in this time. There were a multiplicity of promises that were going to be activated in the months that have just passed. And the devil sought to thwart the move of God. And you may say, well, I thought that we were stronger than that. I thought that we were more able than that. Absolutely so. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But even though that is a kingdom reality, the kingdom realities have to be enforced by the people of God. And when we do not sit in the seat of authority as a corporate body, that hedge that we are supposed to build in the spirit is weakened. And what we must understand, people of God, is that we have responsibilities on this side and the will of God will continue to be delayed as long as we allow it to be so. But when we push in prayer and we push in praise and we push in revelation and in our knowledge of the holy, we begin to obtain the promises and pull them into this natural world. And so one of the things that we must understand here in this mystery 
the angels are having this dialogue with the Lord saying, what is man? We understand that man is a three part being. He is a spirit. He possesses a soul and he lives in a body. The spirit man is the most powerful object in the earth realm. The spirit realm is the causal realm. And in this human dimension, we have to have the body to have authority to move in this dimension. But the spirit within the body, hallelujah, the spirit in you has the power to change the course of the universe. And you may say, how could that be so? In this human dimension, the will of man is more powerful than the will of God. And you may say, preacher, that is a hard pill to swallow, but I absolutely believe it to be true. How in the world could you have a people in this world under the authority of God that could perpetuate sex trafficking and the Holocaust and the atrocities of slavery and all of these things that we look at and say these were horrible things. How could they happen? Because God gave us free will and he allowed for us to be able to make decisions. The ability for the human being to make decisions is one of the most powerful dispensions of power that has ever been made from God. But I want to let you know that we have a responsibility, people of God, to turn the tables on the world of the demonic kingdom. And that responsibility is to overthrow. It is to thrust forth laborers into the harvest and begin to take back those things that the devil has taken control of in this world. And I want to show just one more nuance in this in this verse down in chapter in verse six of chapter eight. He declares you make him. You make him, God makes man to rule over the works of his hands. You, meaning God, have put all things under his feet. Now, I want you to understand the enforcement of that. To mean that all things are under your feet means that in God, he has set you in him, in that authority, that whatever we are facing and fighting, I don't care what it looks like, it is under us. It has no ability to even be up to my knee. It is under my feet. So when I begin to do the dance of the Lord and I begin to dance in the spirit, I am not just having a good time. I am enforcing kingdom rule over the princes and the powers and the principalities that dare rule over me. Because when I get in the spirit, come on somebody, when I am in the spirit, I am enacting warfare over all things under my feet. And that is what I want us to begin to understand, people of God. When we enter into celebration of God and we enter into praise, this is not a human experience or a human exercise. This is a spiritual transpositioning. This is a moving over and a dethroning of princes and powers that dare refuse the will of God in the earth. And so when we are releasing our praise, we must be cognizant of what we are enforcing in dominion and taking over territory. Some people listening to this message have already made preconceptions of praise. And that preconception is that's for those people. Uh, that's for those those silly people or uh, those less uh, less sophisticated individuals. That is not something that I do. I don't do that. I don't praise like that. I don't make noise like that. Forget all of that. This is not a season, people of God, to be reserved. I am a businessman. Outside of preaching, I own companies and I do deals with people that don't na name Jesus. But when I get behind my four walls, I, you better believe that I am releasing a praise party all the time. And if I have to do it out there amongst them and they laugh at me like they laughed at David, just so be it. But what you will not do is silence the voice of the prophetic in the end time. And I am letting you know that this is a prophetic generation where we must begin to take up the praises of God and shift this atmosphere. And one of the mysteries of it, I had planned to share this later, but we'll just share it now, is that now we have all been assigned as the preachers of our own house. That's right. You have a responsibility, man or woman of God, to the, be the priest of your home and to dictate that atmosphere. It's always been that way, but now more than ever, you are responsible for the atmosphere. You cannot lean on another preacher. You cannot lean on your pastors. You cannot lean on entertainment in the kingdom of God to get you through and make you feel better. This is a time now where the requisite responsibility of the church is to step into its kingdom authority and begin to shift its atmosphere. And the Lord gave me a mini vision of this 
uh, showing me how that when the people of God begin to enter into true praise uh, and, and their praise begins to be lifted to the heavens, he showed me how that spirit of praise it invokes the spirit of the Lord. And as the spirit of the Lord comes down, he is releasing a canopy of protection, even like he did for the children of Israel in the days of judgment. And we are definitely in days of judgment. Now, the thing about judgment is we have a responsibility to respond rightly or wrongly. And the way that you respond to it, whether you put that blood over the doorpost as they did in Hebrews, I'm not telling anybody to do that just as a, uh, an image so you can understand what I'm saying. Those that put the blood there were protected. Those that were mamsy pamsy and said, oh, who cares? Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Those people died or their firstborn died. And so God is requiring now that we step into obedience and that we begin to interact with the will of God and the revelation of God as though it is true. Matthew 18 in verse three, truly, I say to you, unless you are converted, and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, that is a very powerful verse. Jesus was known to say some very controversial things. But one of the things in this that I want us to understand is that if we are going to enter uh, into the kingdom of God, the Bible declares the kingdom is not meat and drink, drink, but it is love, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. If we are going to possess uh, the kingdom of God, if we're going to step into the way that the kingdom operates uh, in that love, in that joy, in that righteousness, we will have to become as children. And now you may say, what is that? That means not taking yourself so seriously and not being so adult that you don't know how to obey God. If God said to praise him, he meant to sure enough praise him. He wasn't saying, oh, just just lift your hands and sway back and forth and do what you want to do. No. When you read about praise in the scripture, he says, let the high praise of God be in your mouths and a two edged sword in your hands. We'll get down into Psalms 149 in just a bit. But this was an act of warfare. This was an act of battle. And this was all out engagement. This was not play play time. And in Psalms 8 and 2, he says out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. But I want you to understand that he is not actually talking about babies uh, singing praises. He is not talking about that. If you read in the description of that, that passage, David is referencing the warfare that he did with Goliath. This psalm is written in the pattern of the battle between David and Goliath, uh, or you could say the nation of Israel and the Philistines, the Gadites. And so the revelation in it is that David to the giant was as a babe. He was as a suckling because the size didn't match up. And there are some things that we are battling now that we are as babes. We don't have the understanding. We don't have the natural knowledge. We don't have the adulting necessary to meet forces. And you may say, explain that a little bit more. When we turn on the news, we don't know who to believe. We don't know who's telling the truth. In the White House, we don't understand all of what's going on there, the schematics and the way that these things are rolling out. There are so many things going on now in so many parts of the world. We don't even know how we ought to pray except by revelation. And so this requires us to come into a higher level of operation. And the Lord is telling us if we would only become as children, Hallelujah. Both of these verses are recognizing this reality that as those seemingly ignorant of complex issues and weak in ability to judge the situation, they lean in on their father God. And sometimes the power of God brings to pass great things in the church by very weak and unlikely instruments, confounding the noble, the wise and the mighty by the base and the weak and the foolish things of the world that no flesh may glory in his presence. Hallelujah. But the excellency of the power may the more evidently appear to be of God and not of man. First Corinthians 1, 27 and 28. The apostles were looked upon as babes, unlearned and ignorant men, Acts 4 and 13. And it said of them by the foolishness of their preaching, the devil's kingdom was thrown down as Jericho's walls were by the sounds of ram's horns. I come to tell you that there is power in praise and there is power when you obey God. What enemy exactly are we fighting? Now, in this text that we have taken today, the devils uh, and the enemies and the events 
avengers are defined as this, that which is hostile against someone or something, that which seeks revenge. And I want you to know, people of God, you have been walking in a measure of progress and that devil wants revenge on the things that you are obtaining. When you go into the devil's kingdom and begin to take territory and take land, you are not doing that peaceably. You are doing that as an act of war to take back what the devil stole. But I want to let you know, just as the devil comes back seven times stronger, every time that there is a war waged, we have the victory and the ability to turn up the heat back in his face. You have been given angelic guards of support and reinforcement in this time. And I come to let you know and to prophesy that the angels are being released at another level in this season. You are not alone. Yes, you have angels that have been assigned to you since your birth, but I am letting you know that there is another infantry that has come about now. There are angels that are here and they are doing warfare and doing battle over you day and night. And what we must also understand spiritually is that there is a refreshing that comes when the presence of the Lord is engaged in praise and in worship. Worship even stronger than praise because worship is a hands-off atmosphere. The devil cannot get involved when we are really in true worship because in that place, he has no place. When you begin to bring the throne of the Lord into your atmosphere and invoke heaven at a level that is requisite to the warfare, someone said once, I have to walk in God to the level at which the devil is pursuing me. So if the devil is after you at this level, you better believe your praise and your worship better be at this level. If you have a history where, where your life was outside of God and you know by the spirit and by understanding that you have to walk in a certain level of consecration and purification to maintain your place in God, you must also understand that that ass assigns itself to your praise life and your worship life. That if you have a history of deadness and a history of retreating backwards and backsliding, you need to be praising God with fierceness every day and throwing yourself over into the presence of the Lord at a higher dimension. And so there is an all attack on us, but it is not totally about us. It is about our victory and our place and our positioning in the Lord. It is the outworking of an inner reality in time revival in full expression the plan of God for your loved ones and those that you don't even know. All of this is at stake. And you may say, how is that intertwined? Because praise sets the tone for your atmosphere. The attack is about the immensity of God's intent towards us. The things that we are experiencing in the earth and the, the global pandemic, the global uh, confrontation, this confrontation is about a global outpouring. We have been hearing the prophecies about it for years, and the devil thought that he would thwart the move of God by releasing this spirit of virus. This is a, a spiritual attack before it is a natural attack. And the release of it came to keep us out of the gatherings, to keep us out of the assemblies, but I'm letting you know that we cannot be stopped. We cannot be stopped, people of God, from the purpose and the intent of God. This thing, this thing was earmarked, and I'm just letting you know this prophetically, and this is uh, dating back to uh, prayer meetings that we've been having probably for about eight years now, that uh, revelation came about the years 2019 to 2022, that that would be the time of the end time revival and that God would be visiting the nations in an extraordinary way. And what I'm letting you know is that the promises of God can be delayed. And so understanding the times and understanding where we sit, we have to understand how we should be praying. And our prayers now really have to be with an urgency. Uh, our praise life now has to be with a direction. It cannot be frivolous. It cannot just be because Lord, we love you. There has to be a seek and a desire in our pursuit of God, the pursuit of the holy. The worst thing that we could do now is to become unagitated, passive, and go along with just the course of the world in their response to this upheaval. Spiritually, we must take up a revolt, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, and demand a reprisal on the gates of hell for the terror that has been released. Uh, this thing is not all God. Uh, now, this is the thing about it. If you study scripture and you understand how judgments work, 
oftentimes based on the behavior of mankind and the behavior of the church. The enemy is given ground to try the church and to try mankind. And so those attacks and those weapons that are formed, they do not prosper for those that are submitted to the Lordship of Christ. When you are actively submitted to him, the, the, what is the worst thing that is going to happen to you? You're never going to be found outside of the will of God if you are serving the Lord. And so the, 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 the reality of it is death, where is your sting? Uh, grave, where is your power and your hold over me? It has none. And so when we usurp the power of fear and we move beyond the fear of death and we come into a re reality that God has a purpose for us and whether we fulfill it on this side or that side, it's still going to be accomplished. There's nothing that the devil can do with somebody without fear. And so when you step into that faith place, understanding your positioning in God, understanding the power of your eternal assignment in God, then you can begin to call upon the vengeance of the Lord in the earth realm. The mighty vengeful one is here now to redeem the time from the avengers, even of the underworld. There are those things that are conspiring against us to delay the will and the promise of God. And I want to let you know, people of God, that we are getting this revival. We are getting this end time uh, promise. We are going to see it and there will be a reverse of the famine. The Lord is hearing the cry of the unceasing righteous in this time. I wrote a lot of this out because I did not want uh, to miss delivering what it was that God was saying to us today. Some things that we are experiencing are indeed judgment in part. But again, how we handle judgment is an entire different thing. Have we truly repented before God? Have the leaders in the body of Christ called the church to sufficient repentance during this unprecedented time? Or have we reopened ourselves without repentance? Have we sought recovery without reconciliation? God wants the heart of the nation and the nations of the earth. And the blessing for us will be vision. Hallelujah. The blessing for the church will be that 2020 vision that was prophesied about because we need to begin to see ourselves as Daniel did, as we truly are, to be undone in the presence of God, to know in depth of our souls, what is our complete and total need for a savior. And this is what is meant by judgment beginning at the house of God. This hostile, revengeful spirit of death and hell that is in the, in the earth today, defying the armies of the living God, must be made still by the pure worship and praise of the saints. Our praise is the atmosphere shifter. And the reason that it shifts the atmosphere is because it is a matter of the heart. It comes up out of your spirit, man. And that is the most powerful weapon that you have against the enemy. What is in your spirit? What have you packed down in your belly in God? And when you release it and it is pure before the Lord, it becomes an atmospheric salve. It becomes the healing of the nations. It becomes the weapon of warfare that is a mystery to the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. I think about Jehoshaphat's army that when the people began to praise and they sent Judah first, they were surrounded by three nations on every side. And it looked like they were in for that nothing good could come out of this. And when they inquired of the Lord and the prophet spoke out and said to send Judah first and to go before the Lord and to go before the war and in the army, he said to go with praise first. When he did that, it shifted the entire game. And what it was, was something in the unseen. The scriptures rehearsed to us what was done in the scene and lets us know that the enemies heard the sound and they began to turn on one another and to kill each other. What I am letting you know is that the supernatural preservation of God comes when we obey him, when we praise him, when we worship him, and when we keep our eyes upon him. He said he would keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And the peace of God upon your life is not just because you want it to be there. It is because you chose to obey at a higher level. It is because you chose to release your praise at a requisite frequency to where it began to do battle in the spirit for you. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength or perfected praise, the praise of thy strength. 
the enemies of Israel, Gol Goliath, was stilled by David, a type of a babe and a suckling in comparison to that giant. David was also a praiser. His orientation towards God gave him insatiable confidence towards God and vision to see at another level. That's right. This praiser was the only one, the only one in Israel who had the audacity to address the Philistine giant. And what it is we have to understand is that when we have a praise life and when we have a worship life and a prayer life that is true before the Lord, you will not fear the devil and his imps. You will not fear the things that are going on in this nation. And you will literally see in the spirit differently and understand how to do warfare. These are not things, people of God, that can only be preached to you and told to you what to do. You have to come now into revelation of God for yourself and a, and a level of responsibility in your walk with God that you understand how the spirit world works and your ear has to be given adequately enough to that realm where you can respond on a dime and understand what it is that God is saying. I want to leave you with these three points about praise. God intends that praise would bring strength to the body of Christ. Nehemiah 8 and 10. That is his desire. And he desires that our praise would obliterate and shut down the enemy. Psalms 149. And he desires that our praises would be accompanied by the miraculous. That's right. The miraculous. Matthew 21, 14 through 17. Let's look again uh, at one of my favorite passages and we'll see some of the legal display and the ramifications of power that are rendered from the high praises of God. Psalms 149. I love this passage. I love this passage. Sing to the Lord a new song, a song of the spirit, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the afflicted with salvation. Let the saints exalt in glory. Let them shout for joy upon their beds. Now, pay close attention here. Verse six, may the high praises of God be in their mouths. Does that sound familiar? Out of the mouths and babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained and perfected praise. May the high praise of God be in their mouths and a double edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings. This is spiritual warfare, my people with chains and their nobles with shackles of iron to execute judgment written against them. This honor is for all his saints. Hallelujah. What is happening here? Literally, God is saying that those things that are in power, whether they be systems of the dark world that are lording themselves down through the rulers that are present in our day and time. He is saying we don't do battle with them solely with picket signs. Now, you all know me. I do believe in social justice and I believe in representing the cause and all of that. But spiritually, we must not forget where our power and our authority is in the kingdom of God. That before we are anything else, we are God's nation and we are his people, a peculiar people, a holy people set apart with a kingdom purpose and a kingdom assignment. And when we get in the spirit, we have the ability, he said, to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. Now, you may say, I don't want to punish anybody. <laughs> there is an important factor here that judgment. God said that we would judge angels. And he is saying here that we would judge nations and we do it in our praises, people of God. The foolish things surely confound the wise. I'm going to take a drink here before we move forward into this. Hallelujah. Now, prophetically, the year 5780 is where we find ourselves currently. And this year, prophetically interpreted, is the year of the mouth. The year of the mouth. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. We just read it here. We just read it here. Uh, the verse six, may the high praises of God be in their mouths. 
He said it. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths. So we understand that there is a pertinence on the mouth in this season. Now, what could we see prophetically in the fact that in this pandemic, we are all being asked to cover our mouths, to put a muzzle and a mask on our mouths. It is a prophetic announcement that the enemy desires to shut your mouth in this season. Okay, attention is on the mouth of every human being in the nation. People are almost terrified of anybody that's not wearing a mask right now. We must understand that the devil desires to shut your mouth and to keep you in fear and doubt and to dumb down your resonancy and your potency as it pertains to releasing the word of God, releasing the praises of God, and we must not allow it to be so. We must not allow this thwarting of the promises of God and we must accelerate in our obedience to God. We need praise to be made from the saints more than ever before. And we can use technology as an atmosphere shifter. Now, our ancestors and even uh, those that went before us, they didn't have all of the, the, the uh, trappings of, uh, you know, sound bars and, uh, you know, you got peel sound systems and all this kind of stuff out here where you can just be blasting the praises. You need to take advantage of this technology and use it to your advantage and begin to set a tone in an atmosphere in your ho household. Hallelujah. And we must not be weary. We must understand that our praise disarms and shoots our arsenal of spiritual bullets through the vast demonic canopy arrayed against us and the nations in heavenly places. That is where the enemy sets up camp in the second heaven outside of the immediate dimension in the galaxy. And so the power of why we do what we do in worship becomes important even if people are not in the room with us in a church setting. So those of you that are serving in ministry still, you must understand the power of that exchange. Early on, when churches were first designed and there was a choir uh, or there were the worshipers and then there was the altar and then there was the audience uh, or the saints of God, that was set up in a way to reflect the tabernacle and a way to reflect the Ark of the Covenant where those cherubims are entering into worship and the presence of God is stewarded in the altar place between the two. And so we understand that even through the camera lens, hallelujah, there is a prophetic symbolism that between us is the porch and the altar, that as we begin to worship, even as we exchange in worship with those virtually, on their side they are worshiping and on our side they are worshiping and between us is a holy place. And in that holy place is an altar place where the fire of the Lord descends. And there is a transaction happening and a spiritual descending from the heavens that God is answering by fire. And he is meeting his church even in this state that we are in right now. Hallelujah. It is just as powerful via technology. Don't let the devil make you to think that it is not. It does not give uh, us that natural reinforcement in our feelings, but the frequency is still the same. And we must not allow the circumstances to dictate how we feel, but we must set the tone and declare what it is going to be. I want to encourage you to continue releasing your frequency in the spirit through praise. Refresh your angels in that praise. Uh, a man of God was in a meeting with us once and began to share a vision that the Lord gave him of an angel, that this angel came into the meeting tattered and beaten up and worn, and he had been through all of these battles in the spiritual dimension. And he showed up to a prayer meeting, and the man saw the angel and said, what has happened to this angel? And the Spirit of the Lord spoke out and said, he has been battling for someone who will not turn their life over completely to God. This is uh, someone who is vacillating and is lukewarm in their faith. And that devil uh, has been beating the brains out of this angel, but this angel is holding the ground, waiting on this child of God to repent. People of God, this is a time for us not to be mamsy pamsy with our life in God. There are spiritual realities that are dependent upon our, de our, our obedience, help me Holy Ghost, and how we deal in our lives day to day. And our private time and our private lives and our devotion before the Lord 
It is requisite at a level that it has never been before. And this is time now for the Daniels to arise. This is time for the dawn seekers to emerge and those that seek the Lord while he may be found in the land of the living. We have an earthly relationship of assignment with the spiritual realm. And as angels have been assigned to protect us, we have a duty to make engagement strong by the way we live and yield ourselves and our lives in worship as a pure and living sacrifice. Romans 12 and 1. Prayer and worship dethrones demonic activity. It unseats princes. It creates an atmosphere that attracts the presence of God. And I want to get this into your subconscious today. I want this to get into your spirit today that you truly learn the power of praise and the power of your spiritual in action. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will use, they will use this as a weapon. That is what the Lord said. They will use praise now as a weapon. Glory to God. The enemy's weapon that was formed against us and the will of God will not prosper. If the people of God are truly on the Lord's side, they will superimpose their authority over the plan of the enemy. They will use the attack against them as a boomerang launched back into the enemy's camp that will gather spoils of the end time harvest and enter into the great revival earmarked for now. This is just what the Lord gave me prophetically to share with you today. It is time. And according to Psalms 149 and 3, it is time now for us to throw our praise life back in the heavens, unseating the powers that intend to block us from the universal plan of God in the generation in this time. Those that are spiritual will understand the holy and unholy onslaught that has been in place and enacted against the church in this time. And this I want to give us just a couple of prayer points before we wrap up here today. As we pray, we must continue to pray for an uncovering, for a mighty unveiling of the plans of darkness, so that the recovery to this pandemic time does not carry with it diabolical attachments that are ordained from hell. When we come out of this storm, we want to come out, the Lord said, untethered, unfettered, and unharmed. Untethered unfettered and unharmed. Hallelujah. And now in our closing, I want to read this verse and then we will pray. Psalms 98, starting in verse two, the Lord has proclaimed his salvation, his saving, and he has revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth, have seen the salvation of our God. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity and with fairness. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for this time that we've had together in the presence of the Lord. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you, Lord, for shrouding them with the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I thank you, Father, for stirring in them, Father, a revelation of who they are in Christ. I thank you, Father, for delivering them from the evil one. I thank you, Father, for supplying their needs according to your riches in Christ by Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that this is their season and this is their time to manifest the fullness of God. And Lord, as you have been blessing all over the world in a time of famine and in a time of pandemic, God, I am asking now that you alone would prophesy out over your people and begin to touch them as they touch you. Lord, as they touch the hem of your garment, I declare that those that are sick would be healed. I declare the transmission of the power and the presence of God. Even as I have been praying for them the last few days, I pray, God, that you would begin to wrought miracles among them, even in this time. I ask, Lord, for the seed of their womb to be blessed. Lord, that their children would be preserved in this time and that they would be accelerated in their obedience towards a full outflow and a demonstration of the power of God in their lives. 
And Father, I am asking you now for those that do not know you. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are causing the nets to be cast into the harvest fields according to Matthew 9, 36. And I thank you that you are drawing forth according to the laborers that have been assigned. Father, release us as laborers into this harvest field, in this great end time harvest, to begin pulling those souls in, into the time that this is now. Father, I thank you for the move of God. I thank you for the plan of God. And I thank you for your salvation, declaring now that today is the day of salvation. And to the, and to the time of your appearing, Father God, may we be found obeying you and doing your good pleasure in the name of Jesus. Now you may say today, I don't know this Jesus that you've been talking about. I don't really understand my position as it pertains to where I stand with God. I want to let you know that the Bible says he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities and your sins. The chastisement of your peace with God was upon Jesus and by his stripes you are healed. You are healed in your body, you are healed in your spirit, you are healed in your soul from any wound you have ever uh, possessed in this life. And I want to let you know that God is ready to receive you. He said if we would call on the name of the Lord, we would be saved. And if we would confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Pray this prayer with me now. Father God, I am a sinner. I do not know you, but I want to. I repent of sin and I turn to you now, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, you are now in the family of God and I wanna invite you to join me and your brothers and sisters on this journey. We are a family, we are one and we have your back and we are excited to welcome you into the family of God. This is your finest hour. And to the people of God, I wanna encourage you, continue to hold fast, continue to hold on. This is the time that God desires to do everything that he promised and everything that he said, he is still going to do it. Hold fast to the promises of God. Begin to do battle in the spirit with your praise and with your worship and allow God to be glorified in this time. I want to encourage you to go with God because he will surely go with you. I love you. Be blessed.